Hey there, it's Jen, and today I wanted to share with you a hybrid process video of creating this layout for my daughter's school album. I am going to start with this photo of her on her first day of school, and I thought I would share um, some of the details about the day. So the detail story kit was the perfect uh, thing for me to tell this story, and it's I got my journaling and stuff from Instagram, from a post that I did on Instagram, so that makes it easy for me because I wrote them down right when I sent her off to school and just details I wanted to remember about her on this day. So I have my photo open here and I've already kind of planned out how I want this to work. And I am going to be using, uh, my daughter's school album is nine by 12. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of split this layout into two halves. One half is going to be the photo and the title, and then the other half is going to be journaling. And so I have a six by 12 canvas open here, and that's what I'm gonna to use to put my title and my photo onto and print it. I only have an, uh, well, I do have a full 12 inch printer, but I'm only going to use my eight and a half by 11 printer for this. So you can use this with any printer that you have at home, this, this technique or whatever. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop my photo to six by eight because I want it to fill the width of this space. And so that's going to leave me four inches above it to do my title work. So I'm going to, so let me go to my crop tool and I'm going to change this to width height resolution and I'm going to type in six by eight at 300 pixels and the photo is already this is a phone iPhone photo um, which PS the iPhone has incredible the iPhone 7 plus has an incredible camera with that portrait mode which is awesome so you get the nice blurred out background go ahead and hit check uh, and then just drag my photo over to my 6x8 canvas here and I'm going to put it all the way to the bottom. And now I have this space open for my title. Now for my title, I'm going to have it be first day details. And so um, I have the word art details open. And what I want to do actually to make this layout a little bit more detailed, I'm going to stitch the word details. So what I want to do is just, I'm going to print this on the paper as a guide uh, for me when, when I'm, um, stitching and so I'm going to make this super light and I'm just going to make it the outline so let me show you how I'm going to do that and we'll see if this works out <laughs> um, the first thing I'm going to do is go to uh, layer layer style and I'm going to do I think there's an outline oh stroke okay and so um, I'll do it on the outside well, first, okay, actually I decided first I'm going to change the image color. So I'm gonna change it to white. So I'm gonna to go to edit, fill. I'm gonna use my background color, which is white in my color palette and hit okay. So now you can see that it's white. Now I'm gonna to go to image adjustments or layer, layer style and stroke. And I'll do a black stroke, let's see. Uh, we'll up the opacity. I don't want it to be too dark, just dark enough for me to see to stitch. So I'll hit OK. And now I have it outlined. And if I wanted to have the fill color of my item be transparent, I could do that. But I'm putting it on white, so it doesn't really matter. And it's actually a little bit dark. So what I'm going to do is step backward. And I'm going to do it again and I'll do it a little bit lighter this time. I'm just going to lower the opacity so I don't have to change the color. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit dark. That's, I think that'll be good enough. Okay. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that it fits the width here and so I'm just going to shrink it until there we go now I don't know exactly where it's going to go yet um, or where like how everything's going to fit yet so I'm just going to leave it here and I can move it around 
as I need to. The other thing I want to do is this who, what, when, where, why little piece. And so I'm going to drag this over. And beneath it, I'm going to type the who, what, when, where, why. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then let's see, I've got to just find a good font that will go with this, but not be too, um, I don't want it to be too different, but I don't want it to be too similar either. Okay, so I'm gonna do a 10 point font. Well, let's do 12 because this isn't the journaling. Um, this is, we're gonna change the color to a gray. So I want it to be sort of light and I'm gonna change my font. Um, I can do the regular one that I always do you know what, I think I'll do Roboto Thin. And let's see what that one looks like. So the who is Malia. So I'll just type in Malia Scow. I'm gonna left justify this. And then I'm going to follow the format of the who, what, when, where, why up here. So they have backslashes. So I'm gonna do that same thing. Malia Scow, what first day of school. Okay, so I'm going to click the check mark and I'm going to move it down because I think, well, I have the physical story kit as well and I'm going to add in some details. So I actually, I think I will leave a little space here for some embellishment. I'm going to move the who, what, when, where, why down a little bit and I'll move details down a little bit and I'm going to have the details. See how who, what, when, where, why is a uh, like a digital sticker and so it has a white border. So when I move details down, it it gets cut off. So what I'm gonna do is just make the word details, I'm gonna put it on the layer above who, what, when, where, why. That way I can overlap them a little bit. Okay, and I actually, I'm gonna rotate the word. I know it's meant to be this way, but I want it to be a little bit more straight so I'm going to go like this just slightly and I'll move it down a little more. So I'm going to leave it like this. So this side is done. Now what I want to do is the other half um, and I want to float all of my windows. So I often do this. I would go window, arrange, float all in windows and that way I can see all of my um, my pieces that I have. So I'm going to create a new document. And so since this one is six by 12, I need another three inches to create my full nine inch spread. So I'm gonna do three by 12. And this is where my journaling is gonna go. And this seems like a weird space kind of, right? Um, but it's just gonna be for journaling. So I'm gonna do file open and I'm going to go to the embellishments for this kit, uh, this digital kit. And let's look at the puffies. Oh, that's not what I want. So I think that there is, um, let's see on the stamp set. Yeah, I think, oops, <laughs> I didn't mean to open that particular stamp. So what I think they want to do is um, do the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And I'm just going to stick those on there and type my details out. So I'm going to um, open those. Let's see if it will op let me open. I think I can open multiples. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and float them all in Windows. And let's see, I can choose a color scheme if I want to, or I can just go with black and add color in with physical product. And I think that's what I'm leaning toward. Um, I'm gonna minimize this page here. And so I think what I'll do is I'll just drag over these in black. And I think it might be kind of cool to have these be nice and large and like fill up the entire width almost of the three by 12. 
and then put the text beneath it. Let's see what that looks like. And I'll just move each one over and make sure that it fits widthwise. I think that's gonna look kind of cool. So um, let me make this one a little bit smaller. And I might need to make them all a little bit smaller just so I have room for the words, but I don't have a ton of wording um, because it's just simple. Um, so I think this will be cool. So I'm gonna arrange these and put my journaling beneath it and then I'll come back and show you after I've printed it off um, how I'm gonna finish up this. All layout. right, so I have my pieces printed off. Now I printed this three by 12 piece on a six by 12 because my printer was wouldn't handle something so small as three inches, which actually works out great because I can overlap the two to make my nine by 12. Now, what I didn't anticipate was my printer doing a border around this piece and uh, that's my bad for not doing the settings correctly, but it's gonna be fine. I am just gonna roll with it and I think it looks nice with a border. And um, it did cut off this word details here. I don't know if you can really see that there, um, but I'm just going to stitch off the edge and that will be okay. So for my pattern paper that I wanted to bring up to the top, I decided in the physical, I also have a subscription to the physical kit. And so there are two pieces in the physical kit that have patterns on them that are super cute. And I'm leaning towards the polka dot one to put here at the top, which I just think is a really cute, um, it's a really cute pattern. And I'm also wondering if I ought to put a little, like a black line here or something to kind of differentiate this, the two halves of this, because right now it looks like there's one, like it's one white piece, which is fine, but when I put this here, I'm worried that it will look strange. So. Um, what I'm going to do is cut this so down. I think I'm going to go with it and I'm going to see if I like having a black line there. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to cut a strip of black cardstock to fit that space. And let's see what this looks like. Because then that's going to give me a little bit of definition between the two halves of the layout. Oops. I didn't cut it exactly straight, so I'll have to cut another piece if I decide I wanna do it. I kind of, I think I like the, the definition, and I think what I'll do though is just draw a line. So I'm going to glue these together and This is how I'm going to do it. I got my ruler here. I'm going to run it, line it up. And there we go. And then I will just take this pen and I'm just going to run it along the edge here. Now I just have a nice thin definition and I can add my pattern to the top just like this and I think I like that I think it's a little crooked maybe not okay and so now what I can do is go ahead and stitch my details and I've decided to choose this color and then I may end up using a circle from the story kit or two maybe three I kinda like that even though I actually I didn't think I would like that I can overlap that one if I wanted to no I might do something like this, or I might find a smaller piece that I could stick right here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch this. And the way that I'm going to do that, and I won't, I won't show you the whole process on video 
either. <laughs> um, but I just have a little stitching thing from Amy Tangerine, but you could use anything that you have, um, and a little piercing tool that came with it. And I'm just going to follow the lines of the word details. And so all I got to do is poke my holes and I'm not going to do them super close together, but not super far apart. And I'm going to use, I think, just two strands of the thread um, because I want it to be kind of small. Um, and so this is a six strand floss. And so I will just pull it apart so that there's two threads and get that stitched down after I poke all of my holes. And I'll come back okay, and show so you. Okay, so I've got my stitching all done. And for anybody who's wondering, um, DMC 927 is the color that I used. And it is a really, really good match to this color here that Ali uses a lot. And it is um, the same color pretty much as her Olympia ink pad. So if you use those colors often, just kind of a little... A little aside there, it's DMC 927. I'll try to remember to link to it in the video description, but um, I'm pretty much done here. I put the circle here from the details um, circles, and I thought about adding two more, and I have this one that I thought might be cute somewhere like this, and then I have this peach one that I thought would work down here because I can cut off the edge. And I like the idea of including three. Although this one, it's going to bug me that I can't go overlap it like this. And maybe it's a little too large. So I was thinking that maybe what I should do is look through some of my old story kits. Um, because there are circular elements quite often to see if there's something smaller that I could include. And so I'm just going to flip through really quickly through my past story kit chipboard to see if there's anything that would work. I kind of like the bring on the butterflies, but it doesn't really work with my story. But I like the pop of yellow, but there's no other yellow in here. Um, I could use one of these small, or I could just use the camera. This is from the view story kit. And that just brings in an another element of the gray. And then what I can do is add in a few of these um, pieces that are from the details story kit. So I am going to go ahead and just commit to this. And I'm going to try to line up the edge of the white here with the edge where this photo has a border. I'm going to try to line it up with that edge. It won't be exact, but it'll be close. And I think I'm going to call that good. And now I have this layout of my daughter's first day of sixth grade details. And I'm trying to think if I should put sixth grade somewhere. I could just put it with small letter stickers like these ones. Let's see if these work anywhere. If not, I'm going to call this one done. But See, I have first day of school, but I don't have sixth grade. I do have sixth grade written here, but I, I'm thinking that I want a little bit more. So I might just put it directly onto the photo. I'm going to put it on wax paper first to make sure that's what I want to do. Um, and then I will stick it down. So I'm going to start putting it on my wax paper. I think I'll stick it here and I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna call this one done. I've got my sixth grade lined up right there. I'm not super thrilled with it, but I think it needs to be on there. So I think that where it is, it will work okay. And I'm all right with that, even though this creates a little trapped white space, which yeah, I'm gonna say that it bothers me a little bit, but <laughs> I'm letting it go. Um, and I hope that you have enjoyed this process video, this hybrid layout. I love creating things on my computer and then coming and adding a bit of um, physical product to it, especially since I get the um, story kit, the physical kit, as well as the digital kit being on the, the creative team. So 
um, or I get the digital kit by being on the creative team, but I also subscribe to get the uh, the physical kit because I love it so much. So glad I was able to use some of that, and thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a great day, and I will link to the products in the video description. Thanks for watching.